everybody, 6 Speed Dakota here and it's a hot June afternoon and we are changing the rear brake pads in my Priest's 03, I think it's 03, Nissan Altima. So anyway, I'm hoping just to make this one quick, it's a beautiful June afternoon and I'm debating whether I'm going to run down to the cabin or not tonight. So uh, I want to get this one finished off quickly. Anyway, uh, everybody's seen, uh, hopefully everybody's seen the front brake pad replacement, now let's do the rears. Now, stuff you're going to need, you're going to need, of course, a new set of brake pads, which we got right here. Now, the rotors aren't great, but they're not terrible. So, I'm not going to change them, and unfortunately, it's not in the budget to change them. So, we're just going to have to make do. Anyway, stuff you're going to need, you're going to need a 13 16 or 21 millimeter socket. You're going to need a 14 millimeter socket and your, of course, your C-clamp. That's pretty much about it. A big screwdriver and maybe your wire brush. So, let's get started. Okay, as with most calipers, there's two bolts. You got your upper mounting bolt, which is off camera, right here. And your lower mounting bolt, which is down here. But notice this stupid strut rod in the way. Well, unfortunately, you can't take this back bolt all the way out. And these things are pretty rusted in there. Eh, it might take some hammering to get these things out. Hence the fact why I'm using the breaker bar rather than the ratchet. Well, I'll have to get it off off camera here. All right, so I got both of the bolts loose after some pretty drastic measures. Now what you can do is take the top bolt out completely. And of course you can't remove the bottom one all the way Definitely, if these things are stuck in for you, use some penetrating oil on there. Also, take a screwdriver and pull the caliper back. That'll push the bolts away from the strut rod so you can actually get your ratchet in there. Now, I actually have the car, the wheel jacked up so I could actually probably get this thing out of here. Just like that. So if you don't want to jack the wheel up, you can just leave this guy in here loose and just tilt the caliper out this way. Now, Got the caliper out. Oh, it's hot out today. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop out the pads. The pads aren't in bad shape either. They could probably, they're maybe only about 50% worn, but he wanted them changed, so I'll keep them as a spares just in case. So there's the other pad. This one looks like the squealer tab's broken off of it. Whatever. Take your screwdriver, pop out the clips, like that. There's one down here, pop that out. And of course, wherever my trusty wire brush is, we're going to clean all these surfaces out of all this loose scaly rust. go. Alright, so now we're going to use some disc brake quiet on the pads to make sure that they don't vibrate in here. I have to use disc brake quiet. I just bought this. It's pretty cheap. It'll last for an awfully long time for me because I don't do as many brake jobs as the shop does, but this thing's pretty big and pretty full. Anyhow, we're going to spray a fairly liberal coating of the stuff on there. Don't hesitate to go hog wild here. That's probably plenty. Purge the can. 
Okay, now we're gonna wait till this stuff becomes tacky. That's probably too much. Anyhow, whatever. So this pad here is tacky up top. So I'm gonna go re replace these ones and we'll step back when these ones are dry. So we're gonna look back at our caliper mounting bracket again. And we're gonna find the clips that resemble ours. These look pretty similar. Stick that guy in there. I need a screwdriver to quote unquote help it in. There we go. Of course, don't forget about the back side. Make sure that's sitting nicely in there. Look up top. These things came with a lot of clips. They all look pretty much, oh, some of them look a little different. Hmm. These must be for different styles of brake, I guess. There are two that are really big, there are four that are really big, and then there's these ones that are a lot smaller. So you can see the tops of these, if I bring them into the camera, are the same. The tops of these ones are different. So, just something to be aware of. So there's four of each clip. Make sure you use the correct one that pertains to this vehicle. In this case it's a Altima 2.5. Oops. That one goes in a little bit nicer than the bottom one. There we go. And we'll put a little bit of anti-seize in there before we put the pads in. Now of course before we get too far, using your C-clamp push the piston back into its bore. I believe I've pushed it pretty much all the way in. This is a metal piston, it's okay to press against it. Once it bottoms out, we don't want to crank this thing down, it should go in really nicely. Now, I'm just going to set the caliper aside, and before we continue on, we're going to Put a little bit of anti-seize. Oh, stupid fly. I'm gonna put all the anti a little bit of anti-seize on all the contact points. So both front and rear, like sorry, inner and outer. And of course, don't forget about the lower mount. Inner and outer. Now if you got a little bit of anti-seize on the rotor, just turn the rotor a little bit and wipe it off. It's a nice thing about a front wheel drive car. Alrighty. So now, bring you guys back a little bit. Alright, so now our pads are pretty tacky. What in the... I'm going to start by putting the pad in sideways like this. I don't know if you can see. We're going to just, oops. Sideways. I'm going to slide it in. Oops. It's not cooperating today. So once you've wrestled the pads in place and they hold in there nicely and they spring back properly, what we're going to do is we're going to take our slider pins, put a little bit of slider grease on it, 
I have no idea where the other one is right now. So I put a little slider grease on that. Sit the caliper down on top. Now, before I continue too much, if I can find where I left my anti-seize this time, I'm actually going to put some anti-seize on the threads of this bolt, because, I mean, these things were in there like no tomorrow. I hate this car. <laughs> and I'm sure it hates me just the same. Rebolt the caliper. There we go. Now be warned, I believe these ones are directional. I believe that the top one, no, maybe not. The top one is taller, or sorry, the top, the top one is shorter than the bottom one. I'm not entirely certain. Just didn't seem want to want to go in that way. So we're going to take our breaker bar. We're going to tighten up the caliper bolts. There we go. Tighten. Double check the top. And double check the bottom. There we go. One side done. Now I just have to do the other side. Alright, so after pumping up the brakes and making sure that the rotor doesn't bind or jam, it's time to put the front wheels back on, or the rear wheel back on. Sorry, my mistake. Put the lug nuts. Man, these things are tough to get in there. go. Now just put the other side on and we're going to torque them up. Right, nice. so now we got the vehicle back on the ground. Going to torque the wheels. Oops, because it's import, an import. It's 80 foot-pounds. There we go. Now it's time to take it for a test drive. Alright, I'm going to attempt this with the camera tripod between my legs. There we go. Alright, 
right, well now let's go. Busy making travel plans here. Oh, this thing's a little touchy. Wonder if this constitutes as handheld electronics. Make a stop. The brakes are going to make some noise, especially because they're still bedding into the rotor. Go a little bit faster, I'll make a little bit firmer stop. <sighs> Stupid text messages. So I'm not answering them while driving. Come on, hurry up, man, hurry up. Take your time. Stupid people. Probably look at me like I'm crazy because I'm holding a camera. Going a little faster. Stop the brakes. The first few stops are to get them warmed up. The next few are to get them bedded in. So right about to the intersection. Nice firm stop. Alright, well, just to wrap this up, that's how we do brake pads on a Nissan Altima. Um, it's fairly straightforward, there's not much to it. Anyway, I would have changed the rotors, but unfortunately there's not room in the budget for it right now. Sometimes that's just the way it goes. Anyway, I'm Six Speed Dakota. You can always follow me on, oh well, look at my hair. <laughs> it's all ugly. Anyway, you can always follow me on Facebook, facebook.com slash Six Speed Dakota. Twitter, at Six Speed Dakota, and on Google+. All right, take it easy, everybody.